Welcome back to AB 474 Indoor Environmental Control. This is our um, second subsection within the psychometric processes section. Uh, the section is on cooling with dehumidification. The following section will be on heating with humidification, followed by adiabatic mixing, and then evaporative cooling. So we're going to talk about cooling combined with dehumidification. Okay, um, so I think the, the place to start with this, or the best place to start with this, is to think a little bit about how do we do it. So um, <coughs> when I showed you the basic sketch for um, just cooling, I showed you a cooling coil, a heat exchanger. Um, when we are intending to dehumidify with our cooling, um, usually we get a little more sophisticated um, with our system and so this is going to be an end view of a set of cooling coils so what we're going to see is if we um, cut it crosswise so these are each one of these pretend is a, a a pipe that's going into the page and they each loop back so this is one continuous or a couple of continuous um, loops that are circulating a fluid that has been cooled and then our airstream is going to flow over those um, uh, tubes with cooled liquid in them and that will uh, cool the air. So we have mass one of air coming in uh, with some initial properties and then we're going to have a mass leaving with some properties and as I said before, whenever we're dehumidifying, we also have to factor in that there's some amount of mass that is taken out in the air that's condensed out of the air. Uh, so this is kind of representing our, uh, our dripping or our condensation that's coming off of these uh, cooling coils. And so it's going to be some mass of water that has an energy associated with it. Um, so let's think for a minute about the air that's passing over these cooling coils. You have um, the other sort of term that we want to know about this is these cooling coils, uh, essentially on the surface of each of those coils is what we have, and we call it our T apparatus. Um, and that is sort of the the surface of this is where the heat exchange is happening and so you have some of the air that's coming in that is going uh, if you will across the coil and being cooled and you have some amount of air that is not touching a coil and is bypassing those coils so you have it's a little bit complex there's two things happening here some air is being cooled and some air is not being cooled but it's mixing with the cooled air so it's being cooled that way but not being directly cooled so some of the air is reaching this T apparatus uh, and the T apparatus is some uh, temperature that ideally is well below the temperature that you want to be at and um, <clears throat> that air is is the air that's coming into contact with this T apparatus is what's being cooled below the um, saturation line and you have con condensate coming off of that and then some amount that is some amount of air that's passing by likely is not having any condensation coming out of that air but then is mixing with the air that has passed against those so it's a little bit complex but I want you to think about it in terms of that um, and then let's think how that what that looks like on a psychrometric chart. Um, it's not very pretty, I'll warn you. Um, and I'm not very good at sketching it, so we'll give it a try and then I'll show you on a psychrometric chart a little better picture of it. Alright, so in a perfect world, you start with uh, a temperature here and all of the air gets cooled the same uh, because in a perfect world, all of the air is coming into contact with this heat exchanger and then we have some amount of uh, dehumidification as we move down the saturation line um, and at some point we reach this um, 
uh, temperature of our apparatus. So, um, and I think our book calls this the apparatus dew point. Um, in reality, some of our air doesn't actually go along this process. Uh, so in reality, we end up with something like this, where we have some amount of air that's cooled down to the apparatus dew point, and then some amount of the air bypasses it, and so it works out to be like a mixing problem. We're going to look at a mixing problem in a few minutes. Um, and uh, that will make sense, but um, in, a, in a mixing problem, some of it is the air that doesn't get cooled, but then gets mixed with the air that did get cooled. And so this becomes our final state point. So you have a starting point and an ending point, and this happens because you have two things happening. Some of the air is being cooled with dehumidification, and then you have some that is this comes from our bypass. You have a bypass factor. So the equipment that you're working with should have this um, bypass factor, which tells you how much of the air uh, comes into contact with the cooling cools versus how much moves around them. And so you put this bypass factor in to figure out the final state point of the air that's coming out the other side. Okay, and so from here, We have our final temperature and our starting temperature. Um, and we have our starting and final humidity ratios. So if we want to break this down into, um, well, this is the first process we've seen that hasn't been um, sensible only. So this change in temperature resulted, results in our what we call our sensible losses. Since we're cooling, we're trying to lose heat. So this um, results in our sensible losses, and this change in humidity ratio represents our latent losses. Okay. Um, when we think about um, our inlet, our outlet, and our uh, moisture, we still have to think about conservation of energy, conservation of mass. Uh, so our mass of air is the same for both. The properties of the air have changed, but we still have the same amount of air coming in and leaving. But now we have removed some of the moisture. And so the amount of moisture that we removed is related to the amount of air times the change in the humidity ratio or the uh, absolute moisture of that air. <clears throat> and if we want to start to um, put together our equations so that we can understand the energy change and understand the change in the state points, um, the other properties of the state point, then uh, we can look at a couple of equations that are from your textbook. So in your HVAC textbook, equation 328 and 329. Um, equation 328 says uh, the mass of air as a rate. I'm not sure I've been doing a good job of putting my rate symbols on here, but um, the mass of your air coming in uh, times your enthalpy coming in is the same as your mass of air leaving times your enthalpy leaving plus uh, the energy change plus the mass of water that is removed. And this comes from uh, doing an energy balance. And uh, in their equation, it's not entirely clear to see, but it's based on dry air. Okay, and then um, equation 329. mass of air coming in times the humidity ratio coming in is the same as the mass of air leaving times the humidity ratio leaving times the mass of water leaving and this is based on your mass balance and it's 
come from your mass balance, which is based on uh, the liquid that's condensed out. Okay, and then um, the next equation that your um, book presents is kind of looking at the combination of, of energies of the sensible and the latent energies. So let's start with um, the energy change is related to the mass of air times the change in the enthalpies. Um, in this case, pay attention to the sign. So you always want to pay attention to the sign. This is I1 minus I2. Previously, we've been looking at I2 minus I1. Um, and that's so that the signs work out uh, whenever you put in the mass of water with it. Um, and I think the form of the equation that your book pre presents is the second line that I'm going to write out here. starts out the same, uh, but then substitutes in this equation for um, the equation from up, up above solved for the mass of water. Uh, you can hear that in the background, that is my dog very, very noisily lapping water because he think he feels very left out right now. Um, or very thirsty. I'm not sure which. All right, let's uh, keep working with this equation for a minute. Factor out uh, the mass of air from both of them. Then what we're left with here, which I could have labeled one step up above, this is the amount of energy in the condensate. So, so this is the energy in the air, and this is the energy in the condensate. All right. So now let's do one more um, expansion uh, of this equation, and then we'll look at the different pieces. Okay. So, mass times our specific heat. Um, times the change in temperature So we've expanded things out a little bit. If you recall, uh, just a few minutes ago, we said that the specific heat of our air is about 0.24 BTUs per pound dry air degrees Fahrenheit, and that's for air that's a mixture of um, it's moist air, so a mixture of air and vapor. Okay. Um, this section of our equation represents our sensible energy, the sensible portion of the energy required, so sensible. Um, this portion of the equation uh, looks something like approximately, uh, can be approximated by um, essentially uh, recognize that these two are largely equivalent um, and the value of our vapor uh, enthalpy two pounds of dry air and this section of the equation represents our latent energy requirements and then this last section here represents our condensate and in as a rule of thumb we usually just assume this condensate is uh, approximately zero. It isn't zero, but uh, comparatively to the amount of energy in the sensible and latent portions, this amount is typically negligible or 
um, doesn't have a strong bearing in the operation of our equipment or the selection of our equipment. So we usually assume this piece is zero and um, uh, just include the other two in our calculations for energy requirements. So before we move on completely, let's take a look at cooling with de dehumidification on the psychrometric chart. Um, and I've already drawn all the pieces on here. We sketched it out, but I wanted to point it out on an actual chart. So we're starting at state point one. Some of the air is being cooled all the way to saturation and down to the apparatus dew point or the operating temperature of the um, apparatus. And some of the air has bypassed the uh, cooling coils and then is remixed into the air that was cooled by the cooling coils. And that's this part represents the bypass factor, so the quantity of the air or the proportion of the air that misses the um, cooling coils gets mixed back and we end up with a state point two.